joins me now, live from Athens. He's a journalist and also uh, author of Nuclear Iran. Welcome to the program. So tell us, how significant uh, and concerning are these comments from the advisor to Iran's supreme leader? And also, of course, uh, the timing. These have been made after uh, President Biden was in the region. Yeah, so look, uh, the timing is the issue here. So these comments in and of themselves are nothing new. Mm. So Iran has long had the capability to enrich to those sorts of levels. So just to be clear to your viewers, you know, uranium enrichment is a path to a bomb, but it's all about the level at which you enrich. So you can enrich for 20, 30 percent, which is for civil purposes. If you go up to 90 percent, that's what you need for a bomb. What he's saying is we can go to 90 percent. Well, Iran was able to go to 90 percent like many, many years ago, pretty much almost a decade ago, perhaps slightly less. So it's about the decision to do it. OK, so what he's saying, this is a political signal saying we need a deal again. Give us a deal. We can, you know, we can uh, enrich to those levels. And as you said, it's very sort of perfectly timed. Okay. This is saying come back to the negotiating table, give us a deal or we will push on. And just very quickly, again, for clarity, and I love that you, you gave that clarity to our viewers. What does it take technically uh, to get to uh, the uranium enrichment percentage to uh, to make a bomb? If I'm, if I'm uh, the, explaining it uh, correctly, I, I think it's uh, 60, 90 percent is what you need, I believe. Is that right? That's ideal. Look, you can do it with lower, but that's what weapons manufacturers prefer. But look, we need to understand something. It's all about how you spin the centrifuges and stuff. But look, enriching to 90 percent does not mean you have a nuclear bomb. Mm -hmm. You need to get the delivery systems. So you need to get a load of infrastructure that we do not know whether Iran has because that's overtly military infrastructure. The thing about uranium and stuff is dual use. All this stuff is dual use. So you can use it for civilian purposes or weapons purposes. That's why it's so tricky to monitor. But once you get the uranium and reach those levels, you have to weaponize it. That's the stuff that's absolutely clear that it's for weapons purposes and Iran does not theoretically have. Okay. So look, it, this is not saying Iran has a bomb. It's not saying that, no. you know, we're not at that stage it's saying we have the capability, but he says we have not made the political decision to go there yet, which translates as come back to the negotiating table, give us a deal, give us sanctions relief, and we'll go back to where we were before. It's all a political message. Indeed. And we know uh, back in May, the UN had also repeated that uh, Iran had enough enrichment to, to, make, uh, to build a nuclear bomb. So as you say, nothing new. Uh, but with regards to the deal and going back to the negotiating table, where is that at right now? Well, again, it's at an impasse. Um, you know, where it has been, I mean, I've been following only nuclear negotiations now for, I mean, God, my book came out a decade ago, I mean, for a long time. Um, look, we're at an impasse uh, with both sides are hoping that something can happen. I expect it, sooner or later something will happen because both sides want it and need it. The Iranians desperately need the sanctions relief. They desperately need it. They've got huge problems internally. They've got problems with water and drought now. The people are getting restless. They're out on the streets. And the international community headed by America, they need to put a lid on this. They need to deal with other things. Don't forget now that uh, energy is an issue with the Russia-Ukraine war. So ideally, they would like some of that Iranian oil to start coming back onto the markets. They also want to try and put a lid on any potential Iranian nuclear weapons ambitions. The alternative, I guess, is an Israeli strike and some form of regional, possibly even wider global conflict. And I don't think anybody really can want or can afford that right now. David Patrick Karakos, thank you so much for uh, especially your clarity uh, and breaking it all down so beautifully. And of course, your time. Yeah. Thank you.